Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Wednesday, September the 18th. We're right smack dab in the middle of the hurricane season, middle of September is when most of the uh, highest activity of storm formation is occurs throughout the history and we're seeing activity developing once again in the uh, well the tropical Atlantic basin more so in the Caribbean Sea. Nothing developing yet but things are uh, swinging in that direction for development. So with that being said let's take a look at the map. This is a follow-up from yesterday's detailed report. This is going to be a little bit more brief report but showing what's going on uh, with the models this afternoon. All right over here in the uh, central Atlantic Ocean well that's the remnants of Gordon and it's moving away causing no concern to anyone except perhaps a couple of shipping lines and a couple of fish out at sea we call that a fish storm nothing to worry about but over here in the Caribbean Sea nothing has developed there yet but we are watching an area that where uh, development could occur let's listen to the National Hurricane Center as they say what's going a on broad with area this of low system. pressure could form late this weekend or early next week over the northwestern Caribbean Sea Thereafter, some slow development of this system is possible through the middle of next week while it moves slowly to the north or northwest over the northwestern Caribbean Sea or the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Formation chance through 48 hours, low, near 0%. Formation chance through 7 days, low, 20%. Okay, with that being said, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the models themselves. And let's start off with the, the German model, the Icon model. And uh, that has been showing the storm basically going more toward the west as development. Nothing going on until about the weekend, about Saturday and Sunday. We are just beginning to see activity developing over here off the coast of Central America. And uh, this is uh, late Sunday night, early Monday morning. And then as we go into time, we go into the uh, Tuesday uh, early in the morning it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula so with that if it goes on that route uh, development will be slow because of the interaction with uh, land masses over the uh, uh, Yucatan Peninsula but then it moves it into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico and then begins to bring it up to the north and that's where this model in, uh, ends it only goes out to 180 hours which is quite a bit uh, so let's go take a look at the next model and uh, that's the uh, ECMWF, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. Some people call it the Euro model. Anyway, uh, it has uh, just been uh, issued, published uh, from today's run. And uh, let's take a look at it. And once again, it's showing activity trying to develop. Here we go into uh, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. We are seeing something over here in the Western Caribbean Sea. Nothing defined yet. And then it continues to... Um, push it more like what the icon model was doing pushing it toward the Yucatan Peninsula and that keeps it from developing uh, because of the interaction with the landmass there and then it puts it into the southwest Gulf of Mexico and then it begins to ramp it up somewhat as it moves it off to the north toward the upper coast of Texas into southwest portions of Louisiana and that is not until Friday sunset of next week not not a couple days but nine days from now so um, that's where the uh, ECMWF uh, is concerned and then brings it in on shore in that same area there all right let's take a look at the Canadian model and uh, this one has been pretty good uh, and it's going to be a little bit different uh, it's about the same as it was yesterday it's keeping uh, the storm a little bit further eastward uh, instead of moving it west, it moves it across the Straits of the Yucatan uh, between the Yucatan Peninsula and the southwestern tip of Florida. That keeps it over the water and that keeps it uh, into the uh, fuel supply, the warm waters of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And those water temperatures are way up there. I'm going to show you those in just a minute. But there you see it brings it in across uh, western portions of um, uh, the uh, Louisiana or uh, Mississippi, Alabama area uh, west of Florida now and then brings it northward into Alabama and western Georgia, keeping us on what's called that dirty side of the storm as it moves it off to the north. Okay, that, what day is this? This is, uh, again, sunset on Friday right there. All right, let's take a look at one more uh, model. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, another model here, the uh, global forecast system, the American model, has the system... Uh, a little bit different from yesterday. This morning's run shows the storm, again, just like all the others, uh, not doing too much until along about early next week. This is uh, one or 2 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, and then it keeps it 
to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula, scraping in the Yucatan, perhaps, the Yucatan Peninsula, perhaps, and then into the uh, south central Gulf of Mexico. And then it begins to push it off toward the north and then a little bit toward the east. And then it pushes it to the east after that as it crosses the northern portions of Florida, uh, bringing in a lot of precipitation across uh, southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina uh, with strong winds associated with uh, the rotation around the system itself. This right here would be um, uh, sunrise on Friday, September 27th. And there you can see it, it moves it. And then it just kind of parks it off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina, and then it moves it off to the north. Uh, one of the things that are common with all these models is that it keeps the storm basically moving, except the GFS here where it stalls it a little bit, but it stalls it over the water. So that that's, uh, doesn't affect the land as much. Of course, we'll have gusty winds associated with it if it does indeed follow this path. What I'm trying to say is there are no computer models yet that have really attached to this system. And why? Well, because, you know, we're nine days out. It's, you know, you got to be less than five days out for these models to really take a good hold on them. But uh, the models are indicating something has the potential to develop. And that's where I'm coming in right now, uh, showing you there is a potential development for late next week. Let's take a look at those uh, water temperatures. I wanted to show you that because they are warm. 30 degrees, I believe, is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 31 is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And there you have temperatures in the mid to upper 80s across this area of the um, southeastern Gulf of Mexico into the uh, Straits of the Yucatan. Uh, very warm temperature. And the water temperature, of course, is the fuel for tropical storms and hurricanes. The warmer the water, it's like the octane ra ratings of gasoline. The warmer the water, the higher values of energy for which the storm can draw upon. All right, let's take a quick look at the forecast anyway for our area. And we have some showers just passing through the greater Savannah area, southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina. Uh, and then we're going to have fair weather for the next several days. It looks pretty nice, a little bit on the warm side, but, it, but close to normal for this time of the year. Normal high is 85. Here we go, 87 tomorrow on Thursday, uh, Friday, 86, 86 Saturday, 87 on Sunday. And then going into Monday and Tuesday, it looks like fair weather for us. Well, again, just keep an eye on the weather. I'll keep you posted right here on my YouTube channel uh, and my Facebook page and right here on my Savannah Pat, uh, um, www, uh, Savannah Pat name is my website uh, right here. And there you can see it there. Uh, all the information is available right there, right for you uh, from me. So thank you very much for watching and uh, enjoy the upcoming nice weather.